The world runs on computers. Whether launching a rocket into space or checking out a book from the library, neither can be done without the use of computers. This piece of tech controls modern life. But how did we get here? Booting up. The earliest forms of computers were nothing more than fancy calculators. During the Industrial Revolution, there were multiple attempts at creating number crunching machines. People were looking for a way to simplify work, offloading the tedious job of adding up numbers to the newly developed technology. Innovation charged ahead in the 1940s with the first electronic computer. It was the first time a computer was actually programmable and it could perform an operation every 15 seconds. Can you imagine this now? Today, even a one second lag time feels like an eternity. These first computers were mainly used to solve simple mathematical equations, leaving scientists and researchers more time to complete complex work. By the 50s, computers were starting to crop up in businesses and universities. NASA hopped on board too. Computers worked on overdrive during the space race. Computer tech was spreading far and wide, but this was only the beginning. The rise of the personal computer began in the 1970s with the advent of microcomputers. These were the first computers that could be operated by one person rather than needing an entire staff. As time marched on, the computer quickly became more ingrained in modern life. Computers became common at school and work in the 80s, and by the 90s, computers moved into the home. Laptop computers also came along, allowing you to work on the go. Today, you probably have a computer in your pocket in the form of your smartphone. Hacking the mainframe. The first computers didn't look or act like the computers of today. They were huge, and they didn't even have screens. You would prepare tasks for the computer to do using punch cards. These tasks, or programs, would take hours, sometimes days, to run and required a team of specialists. Operators used computer terminals that connected to one central mainframe. Early computers required a ton of space. The size of one mainframe could be about the size of a two-car garage. Now your laptop computer fits snugly on your lap. And you don't need a fancy computer engineering degree from MIT to work it either. Even the least tech-savvy knows how to copy-paste or drag-and-drop. Many computers were the first computers capable of operating without a connection to a mainframe. But there was nothing mini about them. They were about the size of a fridge. However, they did have their own internal operating systems and incorporated the first use of the microchip. Many computers only needed one operator instead of a whole team. This was a game changer. Imagine needing to summon a whole crew of people to help you complete your Google search. This pushed the development of personal computers for the average person into high gear, resulting in a race to introduce a computer for the masses. The Computer and You in the 1970s, computers evolved into a rudimentary version of what we now know today. They included a basic monitor with a keyboard and a screen with a flashing green cursor. In the 80s, personal computers began to look a little more familiar and luckily no longer needed an entire room of boxy equipment in order to work. While still fairly big and boxy by today's standards, computers with color graphics and the ability to run programs became the norm. These models still look pretty basic to the modern eye, which only affirms the speed of computer innovation. Today, your interactions with computers are integrated so seamlessly into your life that you probably don't even think about it. A lot of people now check their computer first thing in the morning, sometimes before getting out of bed. You use the computer to shop, play games, work, write, talk with your friends, watch movies, and the list goes on. Our interactions with computers used to be so disconnected. As recently as the 90s, there was often only one computer in the home shared by everyone. It was impossible to be online all day, especially if one person was a computer hog chatting with their friends on MySpace or MSN. Accessories and add-ons make the computer an important part of everyday life. What's a Zoom call without a webcam? At one point, cameras were additions to your computer. Computer. Some
something extra you had to purchase. Now you'd be hard pressed to buy a new computer that didn't have a webcam already built in. Even the humble mouse, once big, boxy, and made out of wood, now comes in the form of a trackpad and operates more like a touchscreen. And if you still need a document on paper, printers connect wirelessly to your computer and process what you need within seconds. Many new computers even use voice activation, meaning you can operate your computer without even lifting a finger. Computer storage. Originally, computer data was managed using tape storage. These bulky tape disks were mostly used by companies to store information. The next upgrade in computer storage was the diskette, or the floppy disk. Remember the days leafing through the colorful stash you kept in the drawer of your desk trying to find that one file or program you needed? That was back when computers ran on disk operating systems, or DOS for short, before you could store programs directly onto your computer. Now computers have terabytes of storage and have the capacity to hold massive files like photos and videos and all of your programs, or apps. But depending on how much of a digital hoarder you are, you still might need more space. External hard drives are still popular, especially among photographers and videographers, and they pack a bigger punch than back in the day. You can now buy external drives that hold up to four terabytes of data, whereas in the 50s, even the most sophisticated technology could only handle about 200 megabytes, which translates today to about an album's worth of music. But why opt for external devices when the sky's the limit? Today, it's all about cloud storage. The cloud is actually a bunch of massive computer servers, yet it allows you to store and access your data through the internet. Not only does this save space on all your computer devices, but it also makes it easy to file share. It wasn't too long ago that the only way to share files was using a USB stick, but now even those are obsolete. Some new computers don't even come with the proper ports. Google Drive, OneDrive, and iCloud have taken care of that and allow you to access your data from any computer, anywhere, and anytime. Apple versus PC Nowadays, the type of computer you have says something about who you are. Are you creative with a fast-paced lifestyle? A freelancer who prefers to work at the local coffee shop? Are you in the business world of high finance? Do you consider yourself a gamer or a techie, always the first to snag the latest releases? Basically, are you Team Apple or PC? In one corner, we have Apple, founded in a California garage. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak created computers that were user-friendly and more accessible to the average person. Apple focused on the point-and-click desktop platform that is common today. No more entering lines of code to run a program. The first Apple computer went on sale in 1976 and retailed for around $700. Now, an iMac desktop computer goes for about $2,000. Talk about a price jump. People who buy Apple products pay for the ease and comfort. All Apple products from your iPhone to your iPad can be synced and connected. Your computer comes loaded with programs like iMovie and GarageBand, which makes it easy to jump into your latest project. Apple also has a top-notch design team that makes sure their products look modern and sleek. Jobs and Wozniak are absolute legends in Silicon Valley, and their computers gained a following all over the world. Now, on the other hand, if you consider yourself a computer person, someone who has cultivated a deep understanding and respect for the ingenuity of computer science, you most likely have a PC. PC is the generic term for a personal computer. Companies like IBM and Dell were some of the bigger makers of PC computers. The PC allows you to be creative with your technological setup, building a network of computers that rely on multiple monitors and towers. Often, this works best for gamers, coders, or software developers. Look no further than certified computer nerd Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, the software company that most PCs rely on. Programs like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel are an integral part of work life. 
Without these programs, most computers are useless to the average person. PCs are generally cheaper than Macs, but you might have to buy some additional software and plugins if you want your computer to be used to its full potential. The rivalry between Apple computers and PCs can be fierce at times, but the competition brings innovation to the tech world. Without the one-upmanship, who knows what our computers would look like today. Computer Connectivity In the early days, microcomputers connected to a big mainframe computer with a complex network of wires and cables. As computers evolved, the wires remained. Think of Ethernet or HDMI cables, or even how you needed a specific cable to load music onto your MP3 player. It was near impossible to sync a device without that special cord that would inevitably be tangled up with a million other cords in your junk drawer. Now computers are designed to be completely wireless. It really cuts down on the amount of extras you need in order for your computer to run. Advancements like Bluetooth was a major breakthrough. Bluetooth allowed you to connect to any compatible device in your home without the cumbersome inconvenience of searching for the right cable. Wi-Fi is also a modern-day marvel. For those going online in the early 90s, remember dial-up? Instead of connecting to the internet through phone lines, Wi-Fi uses electromagnetic waves to wirelessly allow you to surf the web. In the early days, Wi-Fi access was scarce, only available in internet cafes, computer labs, or libraries. Now you can connect to Wi-Fi from practically anywhere. There's Wi-Fi in hospitals, shopping malls, and even the subway. Instead of going to the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi has now come to you. Computers of the future. Computers have now become interwoven with daily life. Society relies on them to function. So how will this continue to evolve in the future? Well, it's impossible to tell. Imagine traveling back in time to the 90s and explaining the concept of Wi-Fi to someone. They would look at you like you were nuts, and that was only 30 years ago. The computer has evolved so fast that it's impossible to predict where it could go next. Computers are integral to the tech we use every day, but soon computers will be in every home device we touch. Even now, there are ovens you can preheat while you're on your way home from the office, or fridges that tell you when you're out of milk. Smart homes are not just for the super rich anymore. One day, each room in your house could have a mini computer that controls everything from the lights to the temperature. If you want to see where we're headed, look no further than the automotive industry. Electric cars like Tesla are essentially computers on wheels. They run mostly on software, ditching the combustion engine, and will become more affordable in the near future. We might even get to a point where computers themselves will be able to build computers. Artificial intelligence evolves every day, which begs the question, could the creation one day outsmart the creator? Hopefully, our world isn't overrun by cyborgs anytime soon, but technology is the new gold rush. People are making their pilgrimage to Silicon Valley, hoping to make their mark and strike it rich. Hopefully, in the next stage of computer development, we don't get too preoccupied with what we can do and think about what we should do. Odds and ends. Did you know that in 1980, the first gigabyte hard drive cost $40,000 and weighed 550 pounds? That's hard to imagine when you have a 64 gig phone that fits right in your pocket. Do you use your computer for banking? Well, 92% of the world's currency exists online, and that's not including Bitcoin. Also, it seems the word typewriter is the longest word you can type using only one row of the keyboard. This is quite fitting since the QWERTY keyboard on every computer was inherited from the original word processor, the typewriter. Thanks for watching, we truly appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out another great video.